It was Jack Edwards' night, and the Boston Bruins win 2 0 over the Seattle Kraken, and now officially on a two game winning streak. Jeremy Swayman stood tall, and the Boston Bruins had back to back shutouts and played a full 60 minutes of hockey tonight. So buckle up, Bruins fans. I'm here to give you the latest info on your beloved Boston Bruins. If you've been liking my Bruins content, please leave me a like and subscribe. If you've already done so, thank you, and let's get into it. They started the game, though, with honoring Jack Edwards, as it was Jack Edwards' night in Boston. Jack had to retire due to an unexplained illness that makes his speech seem slow. If you're a fan of the Boston Bruins, you know who Jack Edwards is and has called most likely your most memorable Bruins moments. The Bruins honored him with putting the quote from high above the ice in the broadcast booth forever. Jack made the Bruins games exciting and he will be missed. And man, I loved how much of a homer he was. Please leave in the comments down below some of your favorite Jack Edwards moments so we can all talk about them. The first period, the Bruins came out flying out the gate and you could tell they came to play. They were strong on the forecheck strong on the back check, and finished all checks out there. They suffocated Seattle in the neutral zone and didn't give them any space. Mason Lowry was listed as a healthy scratch, but initially was supposed to play. But Jim Montgomery did say before the game that some guys are a little banged up and are a game time decision. More on that later. Any lineup changes? Uh, I, we think there might be, but you know we're addressing extras and warm-ups just in case. We, there's some bumps and bruises that we have to make sure are fine without having a morning skate and uh, sways the nets. Not too long in the first period though, Charlie Coyle makes a nice move to keep possession in the zone and dishes it off to McAvoy, who slides it over to Zadorov, who sees a seam and shoots it on the net. Of course, Brazo is right in front of the net to tip it home for his fourth of the year and the Bruins are up one nothing. The Bruins continue their strong play and Seattle takes one of their many penalties on the night and the Bruins are on the power play. On this power play, the Bruins have some very good puck movement and Marshan slides a sweet pass, cross crease, to Coyle who is at the side of the net and Coyle makes a sweet deke to tuck home his first of the year and a much needed goal by him and it's 2 nothing. At this point, we're almost halfway through the first period and Seattle doesn't even have a shot on net. Zaka makes a sweet move at the blue line, makes a draw pass to Brazo, who feeds it right back to him, and you think it's 3-0. But Seattle makes a coach's challenge on the play. Here's the replay, but I still think it's a goal. They call it back, but I feel Zaka had possession when crossing the blue line, but it's the NHL, and for a league that wants more goals, they sure look for ways to call them back. The good news is, you already know the score, so you know the Bruins didn't need this one, but I think if it counted, the game would have been blown wide open. The rest of the game became a very tight checking affair, with Swayman making some nice saves before the period is over. The second period, we saw a lot of back and forth, but the Bruins didn't sit back and let Seattle back in the game, and continue to push the puck up the ice, and have the ice tilted in their favor. The second is where Seattle got into penalty trouble, but Boston couldn't buy a power play goal, but it wasn't for lack of trying, as they missed so many empty nets tonight. Coyle had a huge chance shorthanded, but the puck hopped over his stick, and he couldn't put it in. Counted three open nets the Bruins missed, so it stays 2-0. The third period, the Bruins had their chances, but it was Swayman who put on a show, followed by the Bruins' defense, laying down some punishing hits. Seattle got a lot more shots this period, but Swayman was ready for it, as the Bruins' defense let him see and track pucks all night. Zadorov laid a huge hit along the boards in the zone. Matthew Patra once again got hit in a vulnerable position, but was okay. But Trent Frederick came to his defense and tossed a couple punches, which was nice to see. Frederick had a great game, but couldn't buy a goal, but played with pace, finished his checks, and was driving to the net all game. He looked a lot like Justin Brazo has been doing in the last couple games, so I have a funny feeling that Frederick's going to get one soon. In the third period, though, everyone started to notice that David Pasternak wasn't on the ice. Many started to think he was benched, but at the same same time, none knew why he wasn't playing, because he wasn't really playing that bad. And he had a couple great chances. During a TV timeout, he comes out for a skate and looks to be testing his legs. After the game, Montgomery was asked about it and said it was a coach's decision for him not to play the rest of the third period and nothing more. Um, no, I guess you could say yes to that. I loved their first period, disliked their second. Uh, very similar to the Flyer game. Um, I love uh, the effort on blocking shots. I love us sticking together. Um, you know, Freddie tonight defending um, Poitra last night, how we, we stuck together at the end of the game against the Flyers. So you can see us coming together. Um, you know, we're protecting the slot. 
We're sacrificing for each other, which is the start. Our execution still needs to continue to grow. Our maturity as a team as far as game management still needs to grow. We're winning games, though, now, and you don't give up goals, and our go your goaltenders play as well as we did. It's a good step. We we're heading in the right direction. November's been much better in October. Um, no, I just think the last two nights, uh, Charlie Coyle's been moving his feet. When he moves his feet, creates turnovers, he takes pucks to the net like that. Uh, play in the penalty kill where he ended up on a partial breakaway. He went through two people and he was, you know, it was like he had a silverback gorilla on his back and he just kept going. So that that's the effort and the kind of uh, persistence that we want in our group. The time out, the, the second period before the, the power play. Charlie Coyle was out there for over a minute. Uh, we were in the D zone, so then we got the power play. I wanted to make sure that we were fresh. I thought it was a Opportunity. We're up to nothing. I'm not really concerned about burning the timeout. I want to make sure. I want to. I want to close out the game. Make it three nothing. That same power play seemed to stay on for about an hour. Uh, hour about a minute thirty. Who that, did? That same power play. Yeah. Who did? Play. Everybody did. Just about. Yeah. Yeah. For the for about. Yeah. By plan or is that, is that just? No. I, I think the timeout gives them a lot of rest. I think they had a lot of in zone time early. And then um, I don't know if it's that power play or the next one that we gave up two on one at the end of it, you know. McAvoy, McAvoy had six or seven shots. Seems more inclined to shoot. McAvoy was excellent. I thought that was um, his best game of the year, offensively and defensively. Gave up eight goals two nights ago against Carolina and lost the game two straight shutouts. What have you seen defensively from your team? I just think we're not giving up as many odd man rushes. That's one. And I think we're connected offensively and defensively. So we're spending more time in the ozone, which gives you more energy to defend when it does happen. How did you feel about Frederick uh, coming to the aid of Katya there in the third overtime? thought it was fantastic. That's the team coming together. Coach, you said before the game you were determining the lineup based on bumps and bruises. Was that the decision to keep Laura out of the game, or is it something completely different? That was Coach's decision. Could, could you sense anything yesterday or maybe even Friday that the team was ready to, to bounce back? Uh, you know, you always look for silver linings. In the Carolina game, I thought 63, our captain, was had some pop in his stride again, so that was a positive. I thought our uh, game yesterday in Philly, I thought the power play was, had a lot of juice, created a lot of scoring chances more than we had. Um, and then the, the formation of the line seemed to have the best chemistry we've had all season. So it's like, okay, I, I can see it coming now. Given how many questions there were about this team a week ago, um, is the, the spiritual aspect of them sticking together, how important was that to translate into the on-ice play? Well, I, I think, you know, uh, it's really important, you know. In the course of a season, um, you're going to go four and six and ten games. And there's going to be a course of ten games where you go eight and two or nine and one. You know, but it's uh, the most important thing for us is we don't go four and six. Again. We shouldn't expect anything less at the NHL because they're very hush-hush about any sort of injury of any kind. Like I said before, Montgomery said before the game that a couple guys are banged up and they're going to be game time decisions. So I truly, truly hope Pasternak isn't injured. I also hope he's not injured because I'm taking my daughter to her very first Bruins game in Toronto on Tuesday and her favorite player is David Pasternak. Near the end of the period, the Kraken come on strong and besides Swayman making some key saves, Charlie McAvoy, who played a lot better tonight, made a huge save with his butt to stop a for sure goal near the end of the third period with Seattle's goalie pulled. It was a very good team win and resembled a lot of the win against Philly, except the Bruins played a full 60 minutes this time around. And the power play, it still needs work. Yes, they scored one goal. But in the second and the third, they couldn't capitalize on many penalties Seattle was taking. I'm sure also that Jim Montgomery can breathe again as the Bruins are now 6-6-1, six, six, and one, making them a 500 hockey club. Of note, though, the first line didn't get on the score sheet, but Pasternak, Lindholm, and Marchand outshot Seattle in the first period 10 to nothing, 5-on-5 five five, and continued to get stronger. Also, Charlie Coyle was 82% at the dot and had another strong game. And my hope? Is he's going to continue to do so. The Bruins record back-to-back -back shutouts for the first time since November 2011, and back-to-back -back shutouts on consecutive days for the first time since October 2008. It was great to see Swayman have such a great game and look confident again between the pipes. If both goalies can play this well, the Bruins should be able to get back on the winning track and not stumble. I will be very interested to see who gets the start against Toronto Tuesday night, 
But I have to think it's going to be Swayman. He has a track record against them and has shown he can handle the pressure. It's not to say Corpusello doesn't deserve a chance, but my hope is they can go back to the rotation from last year when Swayman plays a couple games, fall by an all-mark start, which keeps everybody fresh. I understand people are going to be in the comments saying Swayman makes $8 million and he should be playing a whole bunch of games. But the Bruins have actually proven that they really shouldn't overuse any goaltender. They've had so much success over the years, even when they had Rask, of playing their starter a couple games and then throwing in a capable backup. Final stat of the game saw the Bruins outshoot the Kraken 33-23 to and the Bruins won 68% of their faceoffs, which was huge for them tonight. The 27 block shots shows the defense was willing to sacrifice the body to help win the game. What we've seen in the past two games looks a lot more like Bruins hockey, but we need to see more of it. And I'm not letting them off the hook. Win or lose in the next couple games, we need to see consistent play from the Boston Bruins. I especially don't want to see the Bruins lose when I'm at the game on Tuesday. That's a wrap on today's video. To stay up to date on all the news surrounding the Boston Bruins, please subscribe and drop me a like. If news breaks surrounding the Boston Bruins, be sure to check out the channel. If you've already subscribed to the channel, thank you, and I'll see you next time.